Hey YouTube, Chad Gear Economist here with part two of my Is Instacart Worth It series. In part one, I went over the basics of the job and how much money you might make. This time, I'm going to go over the major pros and cons of being an Instacart shopper. So let's jump right into it. I've been a full-time gig economist for almost two years, and I can honestly say I've made more money and had a higher hourly wage with Instacart than any other platform. Instacart customers are by far the most frequent and generous tippers. Tips account for at least a third, if not half of the money I make through Instacart. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I can see customers' tips before I decide to accept their batch. I almost never accept batches without an upfront tip. And what's nice is customers sometimes tip cash at the door in addition to their tip within the app. What's nice about Instacart is that you're on way less of a time crunch than you are with all the other gig economy platforms. With rideshare driving and food delivery, you're expected to put the pedal to the metal as soon as you accept the job. But with Instacart, you have at least a half hour to get started on an order after you accept it. This generous window really helps if you're a multi-apper, so you can finish a job on another platform before you start on your Instacart order, or if you just need a breather. Plus, Instacart shoppers tend to be patient and friendly for the most part. Some customers are picky, but for the most part, they let you do your job and they won't nag you. Not only are the customers pretty generous with their tips, they're good at giving out five-star ratings too. The difference of my rating on Instacart compared to the other gigs is amazing. When I was doing rideshare driving full-time, I was driving over 150 miles a day. Ever since Instacart has become my main gig, my overall mileage has been re reduced by more than half. Less miles driven means I don't have to gas up the car as often and I'm not using the toll highways that much either. I also save a ton of money by using Gas Buddy and Get Upside. There's links to these in the description box below. As I mentioned in the previous video, Instacart is completely on demand. There are no scheduled shifts, so you can work as many or as few hours as you want. Since the pay is better and my time is more efficient, I rarely work more than 35 hours a week. I could work more if I wanted, but having that extra downtime is nice. A nice perk to this job is that you will sometimes get free food. This happens when you have to make a replacement and the customer isn't happy with the change and wants a refund at the door. Another way you can get free stuff is when you literally can't complete the delivery because the customer isn't home, isn't answering their phone, and didn't give the driver permission to leave their items in the door. In either case, Instacart will give you the option of returning the items to the store for a $10 bump or allowing you to keep the items for yourself. The last major aspect I like about Instacart is that it keeps me active. I'm getting anywhere from six to 10,000 steps a day on my Fitbit just from Instacart shopping. If you're overweight or out of shape, this job might be a challenge because there's a lot of walking and heavy lifting involved. However, if you're already in shape or you're trying to get into better shape, Instacart might actually be pretty good for your health. But Instacart is not a perfect job. There are quite a few downsides to it. So let's talk about those. As I mentioned back in part one, nobody understands Instacart's pay algorithm. Instacart initially started out paying shoppers a flat fee based exactly on the number of items, units, and miles involved in a batch. These days, there is no consistency. I have seen large batches paying as little as nine cents an item, but then again, all it takes is a couple of cases of bottled water and all of a sudden a batch will pay double or triple. What's also wacky is how Instacart assigns the batches to stores. You think they would just send a customer's order to the closest store, but that doesn't always happen. The worst is when Instacart bundles two or three orders together in one batch, but the customers don't live near each other. The first customer could be right around the corner, but then the other customer might be clear on the other side of town. When the COVID-19 panic hit, customer demand for Instacart went through the roof. In response, Instacart announced it would hire 100 to 300,000 new shoppers. The problem is that massive increase in their workforce is not sustainable in the long term. It's possible that once the economy reopens, most of these new hires will go back to their previous jobs, but that remains to be seen. I'm noticing that customer demand is beginning to subside already. Low customer demand in an oversaturated contractor pool is not a good combination. Something's got to give eventually. When Instacart announced it was doing away with scheduled shifts in favor of the on-demand queue, I was rather skeptical. I've been with Amazon Flex since 2018, and the way to get work through that app works similarly where blocks appear unannounced and whoever has the quickest fingers gets it first. In fact, it's so bad that some people have resorted to using bots to grab blocks. 
The Isengard queue isn't quite as bad as that, at least not yet. However, I do notice that most batches paying over $20 disappear within seconds. I also notice that some terrible lowball batches, which should sit in the queue for hours, are taken rather quickly. This could be due to desperate newbies just trying to make some money, or it could be Instacart pulling a bad batch and bundling it with a decent one. I'll make an entire video on the pros and cons of the on-demand queue someday, but for now, just realize watching the queue can make you rather anxious. Hopefully these videos gave you a good idea of what to expect with Instacart and whether this job will be worth it for you. There were a few minor pros and cons I skipped, but overall I'd say the pros outweigh the cons, at least for now. Of all the gig economy jobs I do, I generally like working for Instacart the best. If being an Instacart shopper sounds like something you'd be interested in, use the link below to apply. It's a fairly quick background check and you should be able to start working within a week or two. Be sure to check out my shopper's complete training course and my series of how-to videos which walk you through everything you need to know about how to be a great Instacart shopper. I'm going to be adding more Instacart videos throughout 2020, so be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. As always, if you watch all the way to the end, you are awesome. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye.